Ryan Kelly's the most tenured veteran on this team. That's hard to believe, isn't it? 2016, he was taken in the first round. He, as the most tenured veteran, he's a guy whose voice carries a lot of weight, both internally with the Colts and externally with the media. He spoke today to the media and, and really talked about what kind of energy, new life has been breathed into the offensive line by O-line coach Tony Sperano Jr. and just kind of some internal leadership that's gone on. When Gardner came in day one, I mean, his energy, uh, the way he prepares, you know, he's like, going to go out there and give it everything he's got every single day and leave nothing on the table. And I think that mentality uh, for that really up the tempo. And then obviously having Anthony, I think from where he was at in OTAs to where he was today, Colin plays in the huddle. You know, the enthusiasm, the command of that huddle, I thought was incredible. So uh, to see him take those strides has been really awesome and uh, looking forward to it. Coach Brown said yesterday that you, Quentin, and Braden have really taken ownership of the room and moving forward, making sure everything goes smoothly. What kind of things have you guys done to right the ship, I guess? I mean, I think it was just a reset after last year of coming back together and saying, you know, like, look, like, you know, as crazy as last year was, all the things that were transpiring, like, we knew that, like, we're still the same players, right? We still have the same guys in this room. We can go do what we wanted to do. You know, the first half of Minnesota, we did what we wanted to do. Um, these games, and we look back at the film, I thought Tony did a great job of highlighting a lot of the plays that we had last year. He's like, it's not all bad. He's like, you know, you – we have some miscommunication breakdown, stuff like that happens, and it gets you know blown out of proportion. But it's like you know you turn on the other plays that nobody talks about, but we're dominating. So this is what you have to go do. And I think that he's been a great factor in that room, just to bring us all back and like give us that that bond, that that band of brother mentality of going back out there and just doing it for each other. It's been awesome. Right, I realize everybody takes care of their own business. But does does it impede the progress of the offense when JT's not out there? I mean, you definitely feel it. I mean, he's obviously our guy, a um, great running back, and he's been that way for the last couple of years. So um, it is weird. I think it's kind of the same thing as you missing any guy, right? It's always a – they always say it's a plug-and-play business, but, you know, when you're missing, like, a star player like that, it is tough. But uh, I hope the guys that have been out there so far have done a great job. I think Zach Moss is doing an incredible job. We've got some young guys in there who um, are really getting their chance to shine. So um, obviously hope he gets back out there soon. From a long-field perspective, how does a, how does a stud running back help an offense? I know talking about, oh, you can kind of replace him, but – yeah, I mean, it's, it's not just running the ball, it's communication, it's, it's you know, getting in there and protection meetings and learning it. Uh, I mean, so much of what, you know, running backs do is protection. They don't see that. It's not the sexiest stat in the world. Um, but, you know, certainly having those both, you know, both abilities to do that is such a big, big, crucial role, and that's why he's great. Ryan, what have you seen from the young guys in Fries and Ryan and so They've been great. I mean, I, just everybody in the in the in the, in the room, right? Like, it's it's a place that guys want to come to right now. It's it's a guy. It's a place that like that we love, right? Like, it's that it's that that sacred room um, that we didn't have the last couple of years. And I thought it's just been amazing to to be back and with the guys. Um, and obviously, training camp so special because you're really growing um, the entire offensive line together, right? It's, it's the young guys we're bringing along. It's the guys that have been there for a long time, like me, Q, and Braden. Um, and just building it now, and that's what's awesome about it. What kind of adjustments have you had to make with the entirely new offensive staff and new offensive line coach even um, on your part? I mean, it's just kind of the game. Uh, it's part of the NFL. I mean, it's luckily Shane's come from the Eagles where it's not too too different, but um, I think Tony's done a great job of listening to players too. I think it's a huge, it's, it's a hugely missed uh, point in the NFL as far as coaches goes is, uh, I mean, you get to let players play, and they learn through experiences. Um, you know, he doesn't have all the answers. We don't have all the answers. So it's always a collective peer-to-peer -peer, uh, collaboration. And at the end of the day, you know, he's the coach. We listen to him. But I thought he's done a great job of listening to us and seeing, um, you know, input on, us, on our part and just collective talking. That's how you get better. That's how we grow. Ryan, if there's one, if there's one. Say again? Do you see the personality in the show? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's – uh, I was thinking about like what it'd be like to have those to both of those guys in the room. I mean, uh, I think at one point they all, those two and Frank were all together together. So it's it's cool. And um, I mean, we just love Shane so much. It's awesome. If there's one word to describe this year's line, what is that? I mean, I would say I'd say beast comes to mind. Um, you know, after last year, I think that you know we all kind of took a couple steps back from the game. You know, we didn't really talk to each other for you know a week or two. And I think that we needed that um, to really you know think about last year and the last couple of years and how they've gone um, and when we came back in the beginning of April mid-April uh, the energy in the place had changed I could tell as soon as we walked in like guys were happy to be back guys were ready to go back to work um, and I mean it's probably hard for you guys to see it and write a paper about it but um, being in that room every day in the last four months seeing the room develop and getting back to where it was before uh, it's been really special so that's the word.
is there a strong camaraderie uh, outside of the practice field? Is there a strong camaraderie outside of the practice field? Do you guys get together and stuff? Oh, yeah, it's got to be. I mean, it's always been that way. Um, and obviously, COVID was a little weird for a couple of years, but um, you know, guys hanging out, guys going to dinner, guys bullshitting together. Like those are, you know, it's just that's just the best part of being an offensive lineman in the NFL, man. It's like you know, we've got guys from all walks of life, you know, coast to coast, north and south, and uh, you know, to come together, you know, knowing that like not everybody's going to be here in you know a month from now, um, but like this time is so special, and we've got a great, we got two great coaches in there who are pushing us, who are you know instilling all that faith in us, and really gaining all that confidence back for every player. I think it's amazing. This offseason kind of was the first one where your name came up in a little bit in trade rumors. Um, how do you been kind of attacking that and that different aspect of the offseason? I don't care. I don't look at it. <laughs> Ryan, sorry if this has been asked. How have you seen Shane put his fingerprints on this team? It's been amazing. I mean, uh, I think two things come to mind. is just the execution um, and then also just competing and having fun. I mean, a guy like that, you know, he understands what it takes to get to that level. Like, look at their, you know, the season last year that they had, and the, the first year they got to Philly when they started out a little slow and everybody was doubting them, right? The comeback from that, but also it, it's a game of like having fun. Like, you can go to work every day and be miserable. Um, things aren't going great, this and that, and that's an awful place to be around. But Shane's, he mixes in the competitive fun, um, the greatness, the excellence. He's going to hold every guy too, and also like you know, calling out everything that's small, right? If, if you're missing something here. If it's a walkthrough and there's a you know a bad snap or we're not in the right formation, like that's going to get called out, and that's how you hold guys accountable. That's how you get better as a team. That's Ryan Kelly, and after talking to Ryan Kelly today and listening to Tony Sperano the other day, you know what? You got to feel pretty good about this offensive line. These guys have played really well in the past. It's not like physically they're incapable of playing well. There was an emotional disconnect, a lack of communication, although. They showed themselves, and you heard Ryan Kelly say it, that in film from last year, you saw that offensive line play at a high level. It didn't happen all the time, but it happened, and these guys are buying into the fact that it can happen again.